to welcome to you who are visiting, who are worshiping at home as well. Um, a couple of announcements today. Uh, we are sending a letter of transfer that has been requested for Janet and Leroy Levenhood. They've been worshiping for a while at St. James, and they plan to join on October 1st. So we will be, we will be wishing them uh, Godspeed on their, this, this new part of their journey. Uh, secondly, I have changed a little tiny thing in the liturgy today. I would like us to sit during the hymn of the day. And my reason for that is I feel like uh, it just maintains the relaxation and the space for meditation and being quiet a little bit after the sermon. You know, if you sort of pop up, then there you are. <laughs> you know, to me anyway, it, you know, it, it kind of breaks the mood. So let's try to sit, all right? And third, um, my phone number is in the uh, is in the bulletin. Uh, please feel free to use it. Let me just tell you though that this is a landline. It's you know I don't have it with me all the time, so it does take messages, and I will return your call when I can. Um, I I think communication is better than non-communication, so you know feel free. Um, but I won't put my email in because I get so many of those that <laughs> could get lost. All right? Okay. Uh, are there any other announcements? All right. In that case, those who are able are invited to stand. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus, who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and your neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As an ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. reading from Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. The Psalms read responsibly. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who 
satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. O Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor have you paid us according to our for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you been good for our transgressions from us. As the Father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. A reading from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced that they're in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they gave thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Peter came to came and said to Jesus. Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, 
I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. A friend once told me that any enterprise requiring counting was not worthwhile. Of course, there is one big exception, and that's when you're counting the offering. <laughs> okay. So, when Peter asks Jesus how many times you need to forgive someone, he's off base. Peter is hoping that seven times will do it. Whew. Done. Enough. Right? But it doesn't work that way, according to Jesus. And so Jesus gives Peter a big number, one that he can't keep track of or control. Jesus is telling Peter that forgiveness needs to be infinite, boundless, part of our character and our whole approach to life. Of course, that is not something you and I are capable of on our own. We have to want it, ask for it, pray for it. It's not always true, but the vast majority of the time, the people who harm or offend us are well known to us, and we need to interact with them often. And you know, that just makes sense. I mean, uh, people who we don't really know, I mean, we don't that much care what they do, right? But the people we're close to, you know, that's quite another matter. And indeed, 85% of all murders occur within family or friendship groups. Which is, by the way, why capital punishment isn't much of a deterrent. Most murderers seem to have one murder in them. And it's very often someone they know and love and are often loved by in return. And that is why to keep the relationship going, it's actually the victim the one who is hurt the most, who is the very one who needs to do the forgiving. Other people can be outraged and can seek justice and punishment, but the victim is the one who needs to forgive. You and I can't forgive Hitler for the Holocaust against the Jews. Only the Jews can do that. That's the general situation. But I once knew a heartbreaking situation where a victim actually had to do both, forgive and seek justice. What I'm about to share with you is all from the very notorious public record. None of this came to me in pastoral confidence. There was a man, you may recall, named John List, who in December of 1971 killed his wife, his mother, his daughter, and his two sons. List was an out-of-work accountant in New Jersey, using money out of his 82-year-old mother's bank account to pay his own debts. He slaughtered his family in their house, and on the intercom, he left organ music playing, Bach. And then he fled and changed his identity and eluded capture for 18 years. John List had grown up in Michigan and was a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, where he often taught Sunday school. About the murder, List wrote a five-page letter to his pastor explaining his motives. He said he killed his family to keep their souls pure in this evil world. 
In establishing his new identity, List moved to Richmond, Virginia, where he decided to hide out. 